Hi everyone, I'm Ben, welcome back to my channel. I worked out something quite worrying the other day. So I'm currently 32 years old and life expectancy in the UK is about 80. So if I have a good run, I've got about 48 years left. Now, if I read one book per week, 52 books per year for the rest of my life, that means I've only got about two and a half thousand books left before I pop my clogs. And do you know how many books are released every single year in the UK? Over 180,000. Which means if I wanted to read only books released in 2023 for the rest of my life, I'd only get through about 1% of them. Why on earth have I started this video with such a depressing fact? Well, it's to emphasize the importance of reading what you enjoy because your time is a precious and limited resource. And with that in mind, I wanna draw your attention to 12 books being released in 2023 that I think will be worth your time. I'll go through these books one by one in the order that they're being released. And this is based on the UK publication date. First up is In Ascension by Martin McInnes. Martin McInnes is an author that's released a few books before, but I've never read any of them. This just came on my radar from a few other books to watch out for videos that I've watched on BookTube. This is about a marine biologist who discovers a strange phenomena at the bottom of the Atlantic Ocean and then gets pulled into working with some space agency um, and the story spans across the entire cosmos apparently. It seems like it's also going to have some intimate family drama and those two things combined, sort of the universe and family, is sort of reading catnip for me so I'm really excited about this one. It's coming out on the 2nd of February and it's published by Atlantic. Next up is Burnham Wood by Eleanor Catton who you may remember from her doorstop of a novel The Luminaries which won the Booker Prize um, maybe getting on for 10 years ago now. She's back with her follow-up and the Burnham Wood of the title refers to a guerrilla gardening group and that's guerrilla as in independent not the chest beating primates. They go around planting crops where no one's going to notice and then there's a natural disaster that gives them access to an abandoned farm. I'm not really sure where it goes from there, but the blurb describes it as a gripping psychological thriller that's Shakespearean in its wit, drama and immersion in character. And that it's a brilliantly constructed consideration of intentions, actions and consequences. It is an unflinching examination of the human impulse to ensure our own survival. I haven't read The Luminaries, but I know that people love it. It does sound like a really interesting set of themes that Eleanor Catton's exploring. Um, so I'm looking out for this one. It comes out on the 2nd of March and it's published by Granta. Cuddy by Benjamin Myers also comes out in March. Benjamin Myers is, in my opinion, a really underrated British author who's published some really quite brilliant books, including The Perfect Golden Circle, which was one of my favourites from last year. This one's a retelling of the story of St Cuthbert, who's the unofficial patron saint of the north of England. It's apparently quite an experimental novel, which is a little bit different for him, and it includes prose, poetry, play and real historical accounts um, and it's got a huge cast of characters whose sort of dreams and desires all orbit around Durham Cathedral which is sort of up in the north. It's released on the 16th of March and it's published by Bloomsbury. Released on the same day is Flux by Jin Wu Chong. This is about a man who thinks his employers have discovered time travel and are using it to cover up some pretty grisly crimes but it's also about grief, trauma and the Asian American identity the blurb says that it's similar in vain to Ling Ma's Severance, um, but I'm also getting Severance TV show vibes from it. If you haven't watched Severance, it's one of the best things that's been released in recent years, so I would highly recommend it. Uh, and so it makes me really look forward to this book. It's being published by Melville House. Then we have Shy by Max Porter, author of Grief is a Thing with Feathers and Lanny. I don't know too much about this one, but it's about a troubled teenage boy escaping last chance a home for very disturbed young men. I'm guessing based on his previous work, it's gonna be another pretty slim novel and probably quite experimental. So it should be an interesting read. It's published on the 6th of April by Faber. The next book on the list is Sparrow, which is James Hines' new novel. This is a historical fiction book about a boy called Jacob, also known as Sparrow, who's the last survivor of an abandoned British Roman town. Not sure what has happened or is going to happen to him, but the blurb says, a hard fate awaits Sparrow one that involves suffering, murder, mayhem, and the scattering of the little community that has become his whole world. I've heard comparisons of this sort of being a little life in Roman Britain. Um, I'm not sure if it's queer fiction, but if it is, I am down. Very excited about this one. It's released on May the 4th, also known as Star Wars Day, and it's published by Macmillan. The next book is Small Worlds by Caleb Azuma Nelson. So this is his follow-up to Open Water, um, and it looks like it's going to be another intense love story, this time about a character called Stephen, a black British man who solves his problems through dancing. Open Water was really beautifully written, and although the wheels sort of fell off it a bit for me in the second half, um, I really enjoyed reading it, and I think 
Caleb Azuma Nelson is one of the most exciting young writers in the UK today. So looking forward to this release. It's published by Penguin on the 11th of May. Then we have The Late Americans by Brandon Taylor, who you might remember from his Foils Book of the Year winning Real Life, which came out a few years ago now. And Filthy Animals was his follow-up short story collection. The Late Americans is a book that focuses on a loose circle of friends and lovers in Iowa City, and it follows them through their volatile year of self-discovery. It feels like it's going to be about that precarious time in your 20s when you're not sure what you want to do with your life and you're not sure what's next. And I always find that really interesting to read about. It's released on the 22nd of June and it's published by Vintage. The next book I want to tell you about is one that I'm super excited for. It's the debut novel by Nana Kwame Ajay Brenya, Chain Gang All Stars. You may remember Ajay Brenya released a book of short stories a few years ago called Friday Black. It was a set of really inventive short stories. Um, if you are a fan of George Saunders, you would love them. And I think Ajay Brenya might have been mentored by George Saunders at one point. Um, but yeah, there's a lot of similarities there, sort of pushing some interesting ideas to their limits and, and these sort of really strange, surreal tales. I loved it. It poked a lot of fun at American consumerism and had a lot to say about sort of race and identity. This is Ajay Brenya's first novel, and it sounds like it's going to push a lot of the same buttons as Friday Black. So the Chain Gang All-Stars of the title refers to a highly popular, highly controversial profit-raising program inside America's private prison system, hearkening back to the time of gladiators, but watched by millions of live stream subscribers, prisoners compete for the ultimate prize, their freedom. This is going to be great. I can feel it. Next up is an interesting one. It's the long awaited return of Zadie Smith with her new novel, The Fraud. Now, this is a historical novel based on real events. And I think it's the first time she's she's written historical fiction. It's about a real life trial of imposture where Sir Roger Tichborne is accused of being a fraud. And a Jamaican man, Andrew Bogle, is the star witness in a case that is capturing the imagination of the entire country. The blurb says it's a dazzling novel about truth and fiction, Jamaica and Britain, fraudulence and authenticity and the mystery of other people. Sounds incredibly interesting, and I'm sure a lot will be said about it when it's published by Penguin on the 7th of September. Published on the same day by Little Brown is When We Were Sisters by Fatima Asghar. This is one that is already out in the US, I believe, but it's about three Muslim American girls who are orphaned and then have to raise each other. It's a coming of age novel about sisterhood, family, gender, identity, and much more, and it sounds wonderful. Finally, then, is the new novel by Taffy Bredessa Ackner, Long Island Compromise. Bredessa Ackner is known for the novel Fleischman is in Trouble, which was released a few years ago now. And I feel like there's quite split opinions on it. I really loved it, but we did it for my book club and lots of people did not like reading about spoiled, entitled rich people. Uh, but I found it sort of endlessly entertaining. This one is an intergenerational family drama. It's a man who's sort of kidnapped and held at ransom in the 1980s. And then 40 years later, I assume in the early 2020s, he goes through something that sort of forces him to reckon with what happened to him. I'm not sure if the 1980s portion is going to be a sort of prelude to the main action happening in the modern day, or if it's a book of two halves, or if it's a book of two sort of interweaving timelines. Either way, I'm a sucker for these types of books. I thought Fleischman is in Trouble was terrific, and I'm sure this one's going to be great too. It's out on the 3rd of October, published by Headline. So that's my dirty dozen of 2023 releases that I'm excited about. If there are any that you're looking forward to that I haven't covered, let me know in the comments. If you liked this video, give it a thumbs up. And if you're not subscribed, why not hit the subscribe button? Until next time, toodles.